Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, so, hello, it's me, John the Nice Guy. Uh, I am here. Uh, it's a bit late UK time, about 11 o'clock. Um, and I am uh, trying to get back into the swing of doing some of these uh, live streams. Uh, I have built myself a cloud uh, virtual desktop. Uh, so the CPU is not great, uh, but it's working. It's working. That's the important thing. Uh, and as of right now, I am just running Vagrant up now. Uh, on my previous streams, I have explained about Vagrant and the, how it works. Uh, so Vagrant is a uh, wrapper around VirtualBox. Uh, so hence, I've had to provision a virtual machine in Azure. Azure has got um, the connection between the hypervisor platform and the virtual machine that you're connecting to, which means you can then run what they call nested virtualization. So I'm running a virtual box inside a Hyper-V machine on Azure. Um, the desktop environment I'm using is KDE, uh, it's Kubuntu. Well, it's sort of, it's sort of Ubuntu, Kubuntu. Um, uh, and I am using Visual Studio Code, which you'll recognize up here. This is the lovely, very lovely Visual Studio Code. Um, so, in this window up here, uh, which you can't see, um, I am. Uh, in fact, you can you can see you can see the window. You just can't see me pointing at it because I've cropped the webcam just so you can see my face. Otherwise, you'd see all the stuff behind me on the wall. Um, but so, what you have up here at the moment is you are looking at it building. What is it building? Well, it is building the virtual machine that we wanted it to build. Uh, so it's currently doing things like installing Ansible. Uh, and in fact, if I just pop that down there like that and go into the Vagrant file, uh, you can see exactly what it's doing. Here it is running. Uh, done that bit. We're running this bit here. Provision shell. So we are doing a pip install of uh, Ansible. Oh, well, that's not strictly true. We're doing an apt update, apt install, uh, Python, th Python 3 pip and curl, uh, and then we're doing a pip install, uh, minus our vagrant and support requirements. So whilst that runs, I'm going to explain where we got to last time. Uh, so last time, we were looking at this role here, lug org uk dot bind. So this is a script to build and develop um, the uh, DNS uh, records for lug.org.uk, an organization I'm involved in, provides resources to uh, the, mo uh, the varied and wide, uh, varied uh, set of Linux user groups in the UK. So if you are involved in a Linux user group or an associated um, uh, free software, open source connected organization. So if you run like a Linux community group or something like that in the UK, you can contact lug.org.uk and we'll give you some static hosting, some DNS entries. Um, we can give you things like um, access to mailing lists, stuff like that. Um, and so one of the things that we do is we uh, run a DNS service. We are using Bind, uh, Bind9 uh, as our DNS service and uh, one of the things that we want to do, because we've got quite a lot of lugs, Linux user groups, that consume the lug.org.uk services. Um, uh, they don't consume, they are consumers of, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we've got these users uh, and what they are doing is they are, uh, they, they basically contact us and say, we want, we want these services. We want, you know, uh, a DNS service. We want a mailing list or a website, whatever. These are all things we can provide. So, um, because we have all of these large number of lugs, uh, what we need to do is have a way of building uh, the various config files. Now, up till now, lug.org.uk has been very um, organically grown. Um, so, things like um, the, um, what am I thinking of? So all the scripts and all the stuff that's on there, for example, is all very much, um, you know, someone's written a shell script at some point in the past, someone else has written another shell script and so on and so forth. Um, what this is going to be doing is making it so that uh, we have, so um, 
blog.org.uk runs across five servers from memory, maybe six, five. Um, and each server has its own role and responsibility inside the group. So admin, which is the one we're focusing on here, does the DNS stuff. Uh, then we've got um, web01, mailin01, mailman, um, and they do, you know, mailman is the mailing list server, uh, webin, uh, web01 is the uh, web server, and um, uh, mailin01 basically routes mail that comes into the service, off to the mailman service. Um, but at the moment we're just focusing on admin. Um, and so what we need to do is uh, we need to take the stuff that we are doing in um, uh, on admin uh, so we can repeatedly build our um, bind service, for example. Um, and then once we've got that nailed down, the next thing that we can do after that is we can then start looking at using the same script to deploy the DNS records, for example, into Mailman or into um, Mailin01 to do uh, mail forwarding or even into the web server. I'm being quite cautious about how I'm progressing through each part of this uh, because obviously this is a live service. And um, one of the things it's really hard to do with live services <coughs> um, is actually roll automation in other I'm just going to pause the uh, stick the mic on mute for a second. There we go. I think we're all better now. Uh, yeah, so it's really hard to roll automation back in over the top of um, an existing service. Uh, so what we're trying to do is actually, um, and this is why I'm using Vagrant to be honest with you, because what I want to do is make it so I can test individual snippets of the service as we go along and then end up at the end with something that is um, a lot more resilient and a lot a lot easier to work with um, so uh, just waiting for all the Ansible stuff to install itself and then hopefully it's going to fail uh, because actually the site.yaml this is the um, the script that it's going to run the very first instruction that there is actually a fail instruction um, the other thing that is somewhat interesting with Ansible is that in the 2.10 release, which is the um, the most recent set of releases, they've actually changed some of the um, instructions. So whereas in here, you've got this include underscore role, he says, pointing at this when it's not moving, that's better. Uh, this include underscore role thing here. Um, what's happened in the most recent one is that they've actually changed a lot of the um, naming so that uh, you now have namespaces. So include role technically is ansible dot built in dot include underscore role. Uh, now the anything that is ansible dot built in, you don't need to prefix it with that, um, and you can actually issue um, like a namespace command uh, near the top here somewhere. I've not had a proper dig into that yet, but so for example, when we start looking at this role here, it says waiting for the file to load itself. This is going to be fun. Ah, right, okay. So, for example, here, this apt, um, we actually now need to preface that with uh, something else, I think. Actually, I think apt is a built in one as well. Um, in fact, all of these here are built in, so I think we're going to be all right, actually. Anyway, so, yeah, so we wanted it to uh, fail here um, because what I need to do is actually. Uh, to get to a point where the machine's built and I can review it and see where we're up to. Just see what the stats are on this box because it's running a little slow. Bum, bum, bum. CPU is at 100%, but then again, it's a two CPU box. Uh, I think it's single threaded as well, which isn't helping. Um, And we're only using two out of the eight gig we're doing that. Mm. Might be all right then. Bum, 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 Just check something. Just gonna stick you onto the secret screen just for a second whilst I just check something out. One minute. 
Bum, bum, bum. So, yeah, we've got a password in there. And the vault file is encrypted. Fantastic. Okay, right. I can bring this one back now. Ha ha. Okay, um, so um, we have two files in here this vault admins and this vault protected email addresses. So, vault admins not too relevant at the moment because this is all about. Um, wanting to be able to have all the um, user accounts and stuff set up in here. This protected, so let me just show you what an Ansible vault file looks like. So this is an Ansible vault file. It is basically just a giant blob of text. Uh, and the encrypted one, uh, the, the encrypted email address is the same. <clears throat> so essentially these are ginormous uh, encrypted blobs. And um, if I had an example in here, which I haven't at this moment, <coughs> um, what you'd actually see in here is something like, um, uh, you know, uh, East London Lugmaster or something like that, because um, that's the name that we give to all the people that run lugs. They're, they're called Lugmasters. Historic term, not great, but whatever. It's what we're running with. Um, and so that is then referenced against in here. Uh, for example, uh, protected email addresses, Aberdeen Lug, Lugmaster, so that um, we can store details for people in what we hope to be somewhat of a GDPR compliant manner. Um, the intention being that what you'll end up with is uh, an, <coughs> uh, an encrypted but usable um, file for um, creating email redirects. So for example, if one of these uh, addresses here was to point to say, for example, uh, uh, admin at abalug.org.uk, for example, that would actually internally point to, um, you know, uh, bob at example.org or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I've gone through and I've um, pulled a whole load of this together so that it's not quite as messy as it appears to be at the moment. Um, I also have this source directory. And again, if you bear me one second whilst I just stick it back onto secrets for a moment, just whilst I check and see whether or not the email addresses are listed in here, because it'd be a bit awkward to have uh, listed or hidden away all the email addresses just to have it shown up in here. So just give me one second. This has got all the old stuff in it. Uh, where can I hide away? Yes, right, okay, so uh, let me just hide. Sorry about this, I'm just uh, 
trying to make sure that none of these email addresses are listed in here in a way that's not appropriate. One second. Uh, redacted. That redacted. I see. Have I have a viewer? Hello, viewer. Bear with me one second. Uh, I'm just uh, just trying to strip out some stuff here that uh, I don't really want people to see. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, I don't want to do that one. So yes, it's purely just in that file there. Let's do that. I can always put it back later if I need to, can't I? Right, anyway. Worst case. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. That's the worst of it done. Right. So, let me pop that back into top left screen. Hello again. Hello, my viewer, that I believe I have up here. Um, uh, I can't really type into the chat. And I'm still getting my head around how OBS and Twitch work together. So um, if you want to say anything, please feel free to. Aha, I can type into there. That's good if I need to. Uh, right, so yes, so at the moment, uh, I am still waiting for Ansible to finish installing. Goodness me, this is taking such a long time. I am very sorry about this. Uh, so, uh, my viewer who I have in the chat at the moment, um, obviously I'm f struggling to type to you at the moment, but uh, do you want to let me know who you are, where you're from, what it is you do, uh, so that I can, uh, I, can, I can talk to you, because that would be good, uh, whilst I wait for Ansible to finish installing itself. And I'm still waiting for Ansible to finish installing itself, which is fun. Bum, bum, bum. Right, we're not able to do it. No. Let's see. No. Not hello. So I'm typing using my phone keyboard because for some reason the um the, the whenever i fire up firefox or any browser on the laptop i'm streaming from it just chews right into the uh the the, the processor use in fact i have a task manager window up, up there just to see what the cpu usage is like and it's dreadful so excellent ansible has finished installing i believe That's all right, I'm all right with that. So what is this doing right now? So we have finished installing Ansible, which is nice. Uh, we're now uh, copying keys in there. We're rewriting the Ansible config file. Okay, so um, as I've said in the last stream like this that I did, um, this blob here is about taking the Ansible config file and making it work across a collection of machines. Um, I don't have uh, a collection of machines at the moment, I'm just working on a single machine, but this is kind of like a set of config files that I can use going forward. Um, so what I'll be, so up at the top here in this vagrant file. So this this block here basically says um, configure how your admin machine looks. So we've got things like uh, right up at the top here we say this is how much memory each of the VMs is going to have, and then down here we've got the name of the machine and the IP address of that that um, machine on the network and <clears throat> what VirtualBox calls that machine. And then this giant cludge of config file. Uh, right, so what's it done then? So we finished the this keys file. 
We are then installing bindfs. Right, why are we installing bindfs? Well, um, because I'm running this in Vagrant, uh, what Vagrant does is it mounts um, the directory that Vagrant is running in into a directory on the computer called uh, slash Vagrant, which is fine uh, and usually really good. Um, unfortunately, what it does is it mounts it um, with the file permission set to read, write uh, any for all users. And again, in most contexts, that is fine, except for if you are uh, doing anything that relies on SSH keys, for example, um, or config files uh, that uh, detect whether or not they've got particular permission bits set and things like that, um, then uh, which Ansible does. Ansible, if, if Ansible detects that the directory it's being run from has a um, world writable directory, the Ansible.cfg file actually says, I can't work with this, it stops working. So that's a bit annoying. <clears throat> um, if you've got SSH keys in there, um, the SSH agent won't load them. And as you can see up here, uh, what we're actually doing is um, we are copying all the SSH keys from Vagrant Vagrant machines um, into this this directory here, uh, etc. Ansible keys. So if we were to use those keys um, in some part of the file system, then that this bindfs thing basically prevents that from being anywhere. So that's why we're installing bindfs. Um, so hopefully this will very nearly be done. As soon as this install of uh, bindfs is done, we should actually be good to go. I don't understand why initramfs is taking so very long to run. Oh well, it's nearly done now. Okay. So we've got this bit here, system CTL enable this mount, which is run. Um, <clears throat> So now, in theory, we can run the Ansible local. Ha ha, yes we can. Fab. So it's running the Ansible playbook, which is a good start. And then you let it like it will go, failed as requested, and then halt, which is fine. <coughs> Bum, bum, bum. Now then, one of the people that I was talking to after my last recording of this said that my gain was a little bit low. So let me try turning that up a bit and see if that helps with things. Uh, dear viewer, who is viewing my, my channel at the moment, if you can tell me whether or not my audio is any more Listen, listen to all that'd be good, right? So we can now rip out that fail line. Uh, so, what do we want to happen? Right, so, we're going to vagrant SSH. So, this drops us into the vagrant user in this vagrant machine. Bum, 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 bum. There we go, okay sudo minus i to become root, etc. Ansible install. Uh, so I'm going to use this vault PW. So Ansible playbook. Minus, minus, oh, hang on. Let's just quickly check what that vault file command should look like. Password file. That's the one. So, uh, 
So we are going to run the site.yaml. Uh, and actually what I need to do is just quickly pop into the member records because <coughs> we actually don't want that. We don't want that coming through. Uh, hopefully that should have stopped that from generating that. So what I might have to do actually once it's finished running through this script is actually just drop in and check and see whether or not that contact address piece is there or not. So whilst that's running, let me just quickly. He says quickly. This is this machine, which is seems to be running incredibly slowly, but there you go. Okay, so let's have a look at what this script is doing. So it is calling this main.yaml in this role. So roles, the name of the role, tasks main.yaml. So that's what happens whenever you hit this include role thing here, is it looks for that file in your uh, roles directories. Uh, and in this case, we've got log all the game bind so then we go into tasks in there and none main. That's the only file out of all of this lot that needs to be there. Everything else can be ignored. But this one folder here, that one file there rather needs to exist. So in main, what are we doing? So we are using apt <coughs> to ensure that bind nine is installed. Um, and then we're going to create this template file. So what does this template file do? So let's have a quick pop into that. That's the named.conf.local.j2. So this is the config file. So it says include the etc. bind to zones RFC 1918, uh, which I'll pop that up in a moment once this is finished building to show you what that does. Um, we use a cheroot version of uh, bind by default on the server, uh, hence that comment there. Uh, and then it says for item in bind copies, come back to that in a second, um, create this ACL. So let's have a quick look at the DNS. So here is bind copies. So let's stick that template over there. And this DNS file over here. So for item in bind copies, so we are looping over this dictionary here. Uh, this is a YAML dictionary. Ooh. Come back to that in a second. Right, so named conf local, that's fine. So, uh, what can I, how can I do this? So let's drag that up there. And I want less, etc. Bind nine, is it bind nine? Bind. Uh, and then named.conf.local. Okay, so up here, we've got this thing here, that's fine. And then we've got this bit here. So for item in bind copies, default blah, dict to da da da. So ACL item.key, so that's bitfolk ns. For server in item value, so this is here. Right, so. Uh, we're looping around bind copies, um, and then we are looping around bitfolk ns. So inside bitfolk ns, this is a key 
for this dictionary that we've split into dict to items. Dict to items is um, basically a way of copying because Ansible wants to iterate over over lists. Uh, so to compare that, well, how do we compare that? Um, a list is a collection of individual items. Um, so, so for example, um, A, B, C, D, that's a list. Um, a dictionary is a, a key value pair. So uh, we have a key here of bind copies and a value which is this dictionary here. This is the key, bit of hook ns, and then that has this dictionary here. So then we have this dictionary here, which is a.authns.bitfolk.com, and then that's its dictionary there, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> um, this is a list. So that's the list inside that dictionary. That is the dictionary. So authns bitfolk.com that's the dictionary so that's the server.key so what happens is when you're on dict to, item, dict to items what it does is it creates a list comprising of two items a key item and a value item so it creates this key dictionary so key sorry key is a list rather sorry key is a value so the key is a.authns.bitfolk.com and then the value is the list that lives inside that so we say for server in item value, um, server key, and then for IP in server value. So this is the value part of this dictionary. So we've got two IPs there. So what we end up with is a.authns.bitfolk.com has got these two IP addresses. Fantastic. <coughs> B.authns.bitfolk.com has got these ones and C.authns, blah, blah, blah. Excellent. Then what happens? Then we have four db in or in DNS, db in DNS suffixes. So let's find the db suffixes. DNS suffixes, fantastic. There it is. So we have this dictionary here, uh, and so again we've got a, a list that we're iterating over. So here is log.org.uk, and inside there we've got type master, which is fine, and then it says create a file called, or use a file, uh, etc. bind db dot, and then this db key thingy here. So this is fine, allow transfer, and then so again, we, because we've created up here, this ACL, bitfolk ns, we say allow transfer to that bitfolk name service. So effectively they're hosting a mirror of the log.org.uk DNS entries for us. Fantastic, really great guys. Bitfolk. So if you're looking for a DNS, if you're looking for hosting, give Bitfolk a try. So then what else have we got here? So we use the same DNS records for Log.org UK. Um, oh, hang on a sec. Yeah, we use the same DNS entries for Log.org UK, Glug.org.uk, Lugs.org.uk. Um, so they're all using that same db.log.org.uk file. Um, and then we also host OGCAMP. Uh, so OGCAMP is a conference that runs in the UK. Uh, obviously last year being what last year was, it wasn't running last year, but so that down here has got the same thing. We've got a handful of names there. Okie dokie. So what do we do next? What else is in this file here? Is there anything else in here? Yes, we have IPv6. Um, so these are the IPv6 addresses for all of the um, servers that we run. All good thus far. Um, and that is all of that file, great. So what else are we trying to do here? After we've done that file, we then try and create the zone files ready to inject in etc. bind. So what has happened in here? Uh, an unhandle exception occurred while templating stuff. So we 
where is that coming from? From my DNS item. Right then, so we have a problem in here. Let's drop over that side and crack open db.dnsname.j2. Uh, and where's it got to? Unhandled error, blah, 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 templating for item in active group. So it looks like that actually isn't in this blob here, unless that's down here somewhere. No, so it's actually calling out to this second file, which is dbmember.j2. Are you in this bit here? For item in active group. No, okay, I know where this is then. Right, so this is up here in this merge data piece. So what are we doing here? Is it in here? Yes, right. Error was we are trying to create days, but that doesn't work. Why not? I think we need to start doing some debugging. Right, so let's have a quick look and see where we get to. Let's search for active groups first of all. Let's see if that runs. So, name, debug, debug, bar equals active groups. So, let's see what happens when this one runs. So we have to wait for a little bit for it to run because that's what happens. Oh, I've just thought that's just dumped a whole load of secrets in there. That's annoying. Right. So what you didn't see, because naturally I hid all that lot. Was that the active groups section is not fine. Uh, we have a problem here. So, how am I going to show this without showing this? I think I've got to. That's really annoying. Uh, um, for protect 
to everything else to great parcel. Mentioned file once it's finished doing that. Sorry about this, dear listener or viewer. Well, you're more listener at the moment, aren't you? Um, So let me just uh, strip out all of those nasty email addresses. So, we now have a lovely file, so I can show you this, fantastic. Okay, so what have I done? I have, let me just move that ball for that password out there. So, MV, no, don't do that, you fool. <clears throat> MV, group glass, all. All protected email addresses to okay. So let's move that out of there. Right. So let's pop that over there and maximize this. So I'm going to show you what happens when you get too cocky with your strings because it's rather annoying to be completely entirely honest with you There we go, right. Look at this, this slash n blah means that we've actually, <clears throat> we've created a string, which is not right. So what do we need to do? This looks to me like actually in this merge data, I've made an error. 
what is the error that I have made? I need to remove all the spaces in it. It might well be as simple as that. So I'm going to dump this up at the top there so it runs first and then does a fail. Because if that's all it is, that's going to be really annoying that it broke there. So you might be wondering um, if you know Ansible at all. Uh, Ansible does this thing called gathering facts. And effectively what a fact is, is where um, it's asked the system for some information about itself. So you can do things like, you can find out things like, what's the host name? What's the IP address of all the interfaces? Uh, what operating, what version of operating system is it running on here? So is it running Ansible? Is it running Debian or Fedora or, or um, That is still not right. But I can't figure out why. So let's change that around a bit. So at least it actually tries to render it as the right kind of a string. This is going to run at me because no, that's right. A problem. I don't know. Let's just have a quick look at one of those logs. Let's have, let's have a look at the Aberdeen one. Do I need to wrap that in quotes? Yeah, let's do that anyway. Let's see if that returns that. So yeah, so Ansible, when it runs, uh, does this thing called gathering facts, which usually, if you're fairly confident in the environment you're working with, um, you don't need to run gathering facts because gathering facts is a thing that just happens by itself. However, what happens when you gather facts? Ah, yes, that has worked right. Fab. 
Right, so I just need to tell it to wrap any of these dates or any values that look like dates. Okay, so we need to do um, have another look and see whether this has turned magically turned that from a badly formatted yaml file into a yaml uh, json um, rendering or if it's a valid json rendering uh, anyway sorry so the reason why we are i was talking about um the gather facts thing is because when you run a gather facts what it actually does is it will do things like it will collect the date and time strip which for most stuff you don't normally need but, and here's the fun thing with what we're doing with this, is because we are trying to do um, a bind file, bind needs a uh, serial number. And what we've standardized on in log.org.uk is to use the date and timestamp. Uh, there we go. That's nice, that's much better now. I can those two debugging lines out now and we can rerun that let me kick that back off oh yeah sorry um so we use the date and timestamp uh serial number so we use year 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 month month day day hour hour as our serial number because that gives us four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Gives us ten digits for the serial number. And because we know then that it's always incrementing, so it always go up whenever you make a change to the DNS file. Um, now, so therefore we need the gather facts thing to actually gather all the facts. So that means it's going to go out and ask, you know, what's your CPU? What how many CPU? Uh, threads have you got um, you know what version of Python are you running what version of um, Debian is installed on this and so on and so forth when we get to the end of that um, Pantable says okay I've got all that lot what do you need and we basically have out oh, the timestamp please but anyway so what is this doing now this is now creating etc bind temp underscore DB dot blah why is this relevant? Well, so because that timestamp thing, I actually have a script here that takes um, the um, two files, the temp DB item and the actual DB item, and compares the two of them, excluding that serial. So let me find that file. Validate bind dbsh. So literally all that it's doing is it stripping out, he says, not actually finding the bit where it puts the stripping out. Let me find it. Ah, there we go, yeah. So if it's purely just got that serial in it. <coughs> so let's just have a quick look at that, etc. cetera, bye. 
tempdb.bugdog.uk. There we go, right. So, here's our serial. So we can compare that serial there to the actual one that Love.org UK has got. In fact, actually, if I drop down here into this, so here is a copy of the file that we downloaded, that I downloaded rather, um, uh, earlier last year. Uh, so this has got 2020 slash 10 slash 22 13. So that's the year, year, month, month, day, day, hour, hour. Uh, all the rest of the values are there. And so what I'm trying to do here is actually compare the things that we do. So here is our NS1. Uh, for some reason, we didn't list the IPv6 for that NS1. So I've added the IPv6 to that. That's fine. Uh, and then let's have a look down here. Okay. So log.org.uk has an A record, which is that. And again, we haven't listed the IPv6. Interesting. So this gives us our IPv6. And then we say our name servers. Here we go. ns1.log. Uh, because we've got two DNS servers that are both the same, we also point to the second one. And we also say authns, bitfolk, blah, 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 blah. Right, then what have we got? These RP. So this is the... Um, the people that are responsible, the responsible person for this record. So this is hostmaster at log.org.uk. Uh, so here we've got, we've extended it out. So it's got all the different record names there. We have MX records, we have MX records. We have uh, the SPF records. We have our Google Webmaster stuff. And we have our record on the public suffix list, which has gone, where's that gone? Ah, that's because it's in a separate record, ha <laughs> ha. PSL1 in text. There's our PSL1. And what else have we got? They're the old records, we don't need those. Where's down? I've seen this one. <laughs> ah, down, there we go. So down points to that, and www down points to its CNAME records. That's fine. IRC, we used to host IRC services. We don't do that anymore. So that points to the Blitzed network. Uh, so where's that? That's there, IRC. Excellent, there we go. Um, and Penguin was an alias for it. Then we've got the actual host records themselves. So A for admin, AAA for admin. Uh, we've got the RP again. We've got the MX records in full rather than the short versions. And we've got the SPF, OSPF records. All good. Log admin points to admin. DNUK. These are all the old the old names for them. And happy. Um, and RT, which is the same one. So those are all historic records. That's fine. Then we go into mail in 01. So there's mail in 01. Uh, it's MX records. Uh, interesting, we've got 5 and 20 instead of 10 and 20. Notice that before it's done. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Points to that lot at us. Mailman. Where's Mailman gone? Gooey, Mailman. Oh, man. Uh, 
so mailman is that IP address and that IPv6 the 10 and 20 record that's fine and we've got RP we haven't got an RP entry for it interesting uh, and we've got the SPF which is the new one there that's good and then we've got a seat name pointing to there so that should all be the same that's good then what we got web01 where's web01 gone web01 so web01's got a and aaa we got mx we've got an rp which isn't listed on our current one we've got the two spfs good stuff then we've got c names for all of those which point to web01 and we've got SNM. So SNM is our static and managed SNM, uh, which has got, again, an A record, an AAA record, which matches. Yep. We've got text, which should say what it is, but looks like we've not bothered with that now. Let's change that. So that's actually got that in there. So where's the DNS? So we need to add a text record in here. And for the hosts, where's the hosts gone? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need to add a text. Uh, DNS services. Kind listener are very possibly not going to do anything malicious to this, but there's no sense in broadcasting what these boxes are there for. However, this is going to have a um, mailing list services for uk and associated services. Whoever one has got a text record, which is. Um, Dynamic uh, web services for mobile.org.uk and and then we've got here a tax record for that one saying um, uh, static. On that one, uh, oh, right dynamic. So that one says dynamic. So that one says static and managed web services for log to OTK and associated services. Okay, so that's all good. Let's drop back into this DNS name thing here because. It's not built the lugs. Why is it not built the lugs? So what should it be doing down here? Four item in my hosted services. see what it does we won't be waiting a while for this one never mind I want to know oh I know why because it's not called my hosted services anymore what is it actually called Yaml. so that is in DNS item DNS
So there's DNS. Interesting. What's it say? It's trying to do hosted services. So that should be. That's why it's not working. Okay, so. Stick that over there for a second. We don't want that there because that's not right. But what do we want to say here? We want to say in DNS. Let's close that back down. Hello. Hosted services contains active and inactive groups. Okay, that's weird. So where's the active and inactive groups gone? That is in manage data. Active and inactive groups. Oh, right, I don't why. Oh no. So let's pop back down here into active and inactive groups. So We've called the active and inactive group, which is fine. Let's pull in that from there. Do we need to dump out those groups? Service. So we do service blah, that's fine. We do host blah. If my dot logs is defined, which it isn't because it's not called that, it's called my hosted services. And that's why that's failed. We don't need to do an if. Yes, we do, because that's a default one. Right. So let's rerun our Ansible playbook. Oh, let's see who you are. I was wondering. So I have just been followed by a new person, but. I don't think you have joined us in the chat. So let's have a quick look and see if you are on Twitch. Twitch. TV slash person name. 
just whilst this is running because you know can't do anything whilst I wait for that anyway by the way it's very nice to be followed by a new person so thank you very very much to the new person who has joined us uh, I'm not going to mention their name for fear of them perhaps just being a spammer and I haven't noticed it because that, that happens sometimes uh, it doesn't look like it I have now dropped down to uh, a smaller number of frames per second. So that's fun. Right, okay, so we now have these two new bind files. Although, interestingly, oh, I've said it's changed when it's false, so. <clears throat> Let's have a look at this. So we get to the end of the host, and then, ha-ha, excellent. <coughs> we now have these records, fantastic. So, where does that say that? Let's pop that into a there. Pop that back again. We can close this now. And that one too. And I think that one. And that one. And that one. And that one. So, what have we got here? So. Group record for blah, that's fine. Contact this. Popped out the contact address because we don't need that right now. Uh, oh no, we should probably put that back in again because I've omitted that from the. Um, from the file that I'm working on. All right, so there we go. If this web hosting is defined and this web hosting is string. Uh, blah in CNAME web hosting. Dot log dot log uk blah blah blah. And uh, if it via is defined, so this is a via. It says redirecting. Don't need that extra space there. Redirecting to blah. Okay, what else have we got here? So then we go MX, which is fine. MX points to there. All good. So let's just quickly. Have a look in Aberdeen. Right, I don't think we need the mail hosting. Let me just have a quick check. Down here. One moment whilst I just uh, make sure I don't um, show anything I'm not supposed to. La 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 la. No. So we don't need DNS records for MX on that. Right. Apologies for that. Let me stick that back on there. Right. So, although we have that A record there, 
uh, this MX record here. We actually don't need it. So let's pop that out of there. And then we have our next one, which is Burnham. So what's happened to Anglian? Anglian don't have DNS records, which is fine because they point over there. So you may be wondering, where have you got uh, records for lugs like Aberdeen that have got a DNS record, but we don't, and then we've got Anglian that doesn't, and that's because of this block here. DNS name, Aberdeen, web hosting via la. So in this file, not so much this one, but in this one. So here's Birmingham. So Birmingham have asked us for a DNS record, ta-da, but they are then hosting it themselves using AWS. So we have extra DNS records for the name server in all sorts of different targets. So if you notice here, all that they have got is name server records because that points off to their own name services. Good stuff. What about the next one? Blackpool. Blackpool have got DNS, mail and web. So DNS, mail and web, all good. Bradford. Bradford, DNS, mail, stuff. Excellent. So that means that name up there, no, that name there is in uppercase and should be in lowercase. Interesting. Bristol have their own NS records. Chalma. Now, I have got reason to believe that the Chalma guys have actually dropped off. Mm. I might leave this for now because it is a bit late. It is now just gone quarter past 12 in the UK. So it's well past my bedtime. My wife is going to be distinctly disappointed with me for being up so very late, but never mind. Right, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for following along. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, and uh, welcome also to my brand new follower. Thank you very much. And uh, with any luck, uh, in the near future, you will uh, you'll come back and uh, watch my stream again. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, I will bid you adieu.